She has two married daughters, Samantha Cross and Jessica Patterson, and three grandchildren. In May of 2021, she married John Standard. They had been friends for many years prior to the death of their longtime uh, spouses. In fact, their families have been connected for generations. Roseanne's daughter, also accomplished artist, Jessica is a landscape designer, and Samantha is a sign artist and illustrator working at Trader Joe's. Uh, her inspirations, the Hudson River School of Artists, has been a longtime inspiration to Roseanne, as well as the Impressionist movement. I love capturing the light of the early morning on fields and water. For a long time, I have worked with a very realistic approach, but I'm now working in a looser, more expressive style. I think it implies the movement and liveliness of nature in a way more static representations cannot. Many people viewing my work will say, I remember swimming and fishing there as a child. Her medium, Roseanne mediums, are acrylic paints, graphic, graphite drawings, and pen and ink drawings. In the last couple of years, I have felt compelled to work on large canvases. I find it immensely satisfying to see the painting emerge from this large format. So, Roseanne, welcome. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very, you very impressive me. background there you got. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's been a wandering road that brought me to where I am, and uh, I'm really grateful to have made your acquaintance and uh, been able to work together. Oh, it's just, this is just exciting. It really is. Um, earlier, you said to me you wanted me to make sure I asked you what made you go from graphic design to fine art. You said that was important. Well, uh, it, it is important. I think it's interesting, too. Um, I was a graphic designer for over 35 years, and um, I still do some of that, mostly for nonprofits and for people that I really enjoy working with. I'm at that point in my life where if you're not nice to work with, I'd really be glad to not work with you. Um, but, um, That's no relevant. We understand perfectly. perfectly. Sometimes you have to fire a client. That's just how it happens. Um, anyway, um, about eight years ago, um, my husband, David, was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and that was really devastating for all of us, for our whole family. And in the struggle, trying to discover uh, what was he was struggling with, it took a long time to diagnose that. And so we went to uh, several different clinics. We ended up at Mayo Clinic in Phoenix, and, or Scottsdale. And I remember sitting in the waiting room while he was having some tests run, and in the waiting room there was this enormous, it must have been eight feet by eight feet painting of a uh, of floral. And I was, as you can imagine, a little bit on pins and needles, hoping for a positive, treatable um, problem. And that painting um, transported me to a place of peace. And at that time, I felt if I could do that, if I could use the gift that I have been given to share that kind of peacefulness, that kind of uh, transport to a, a, a place that would bring calm, that would take stress away, that would help people to connect to nature, that was something that was worthy that I really felt like I, I felt called to do it. And I wasn't quite sure how to do it. Well, at that time, the studio that, or the agency, ad agency that I was working for and had been working for for 16 years was going through some changes and um, we needed to, uh, it, it was a good time for us to make that change. And so um, I phased out that studio in uh, the agency office in Papa Bluff and uh, opened the studio in my home. and. I still did some of the design work for them from time to time, and that worked out really well. Uh, with digital formats, you can work from anywhere, and that's how I managed to have clients. I have one client in New Zealand, I have several in Washington, D.C., I have some in Canada. So uh, it's easy to work around the world, and so um, that made that easy. And then as I um, focused on my fine art, I actually thought that fine art would not be all that different than graphic design, but I found that they are completely different worlds. And the way that you market them, the the graphic design has a job to do. Typically, you have you're explaining something, you're selling something, you're helping people understand something, you're educating your audience, that sort of thing. So, when you go to fine art, though, you're trying to make an emotional connection to people. 
And so when you're marketing that, that's a completely different um, proposal. That's a different approach. Um, you touch people in different ways. And it was remarkable to me that when people would buy my art, they would come and they would be so excited to have bought my art. They would say, I am so excited. I, I look down the hall and there's your painting on the wall. It just makes me smile and makes me feel good every day. I am just astounded that my art can do that. And apparently it can. Oh, I know it can. <laughs> I purchased a, um, a little a little miniature Eiffel Tower painting. And it sits <laughs> on my dresser. And it is the ray of sunshine in my life. It, I, every time I look at it, I just go, oh, that's mm -hmm. pretty. There it is. There yeah. it is. And the Eiffel Tower is in my life. Yeah. Um, but I, yes, absolutely. I, I agree 100% with that. Mm -hmm. And then we bought another painting, mm -hmm. which I gave to my husband as a uh, Christmas present, because he's so difficult to buy for, <laughs> as most men are. Um, but anyway, and it sits in our dining room, and it uh, it is. It is that ray of sunshine. Mm -hmm. It really is. It, it gives you a sense of, well, first of all, it gives you a sense of being there, which I like. And it just... It just, it's comforting. Yes. Well, and with your connection to Europe, that particular painting is from Bayou France, and it shows the canals that go through the city, and it really is just exquisitely beautiful. Um, the whole um, landscape of France is just breathtaking. Yeah. And <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know. Um, and um, my husband and I took a, a trip in August to uh, Scotland and then um, London and, and Paris. And, and in that, we were going through the countryside and I got so much material to work from. And it was really exciting. Um, and uh, I don't know if we want to get into this, but I had every, um, for the last three years, once a year, I'll pick a month and I'll do 30 paintings in 30 days. Oh. It's a discipline that helps me um, so it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can do anything for 30 days in a row. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll have to say, I, it's been a learning experience. And I actually have written a, a, a kind of book about it because I have been asked, how do you do this? Why do you do this? Why would you do this? And I have seen other artists do this exercise. And fine artists are driven to create. However, sometimes just like writers, we'll get a block and we get stuck. And in an effort to get unstuck well, uh, three years ago, I um, looked into this discipline and I thought, this will help me move forward. And so um, I went through all the materials that I have. I had boxes and boxes of, of uh, material from uh, digital files and hard print files and things like that, that I had been wanting to do for a long time. And so I pulled those out. I pulled out about 35 and matched canvases to those and then set myself up to this and then I told the world via my Facebook page that I was going to do this as a, an accountability so that I would have to do it. It was really interesting the way it worked out. Um, when I started I'm really excited so this is going to be so much fun. I have all this work I've been needing to do. I get to do it. And then um, so I got started and it was great for about a week and then it started to be difficult. It got to be hard. And I, I tell people who are interested in, in this or any endeavor, when you take on something that's a challenge, that's difficult, it's going to be hard in the middle. It's going to get hard. Yes, it is. It is. And you're going to have challenges. You're going to have um, things that you didn't anticipate. Um, and you'll have things you have to work through. And uh, I, I'm trained long enough and hard enough. I knew I had the skills. I knew the approach I needed to take. And so I worked through that, and then I finished it up. Um, I learned a lot from that, though, and I this, the next year when I tried it, I said, I'm going to set myself up for success. And so I thought ahead, and I think this is true of almost anything you do. If you're doing a fundraising campaign, if you're doing a, a, a project of any kind, if you're doing a, a marketing show. campaign, a radio show, you want to set yourself up for success. So you try to anticipate as many problems as possible, and then you set up solutions for those so that going forward you'll be better. And then after you get done, you look at what you did and you say, what, what went well, what didn't go well, how can I fix it, what are the steps that I need to take to make that work? And so I did that the second year. And then this last, um, when did I do that? I think it was in sep September. I think it was September. I did my 30-30 this year. And um, it was the best sequence yet. And it helps that I had all this material from Europe, so that's why I take it in the first place. But those little tiny paintings that you talked about, they're three by three inches, they come on a tiny easel, 
they're very affordable and they um, they can go anywhere. And I think that's maybe part of the beauty of them. You don't really have to find a place for them. Yeah, they, you don't. It's not like sometimes you know you buy a beautiful painting and you want to put it in a prominent place in your home. You want to look at it all the time. Well, these are so small that they can put on. You can put them on a dresser. You can put them on a counter. You can put them in your purse for crying out loud and take it with you if you want to. Yeah, I have some on the windowsill in the kitchen. So. Okay, and they're they're adorable, and they they just they have the the warmth of the of the place that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that because I got one. Thanks. How do you how do you find those then? In other words, do you have your sell through your website? I or? do. I have a website. It's a relatively new platform for me. I rebuilt the site in May. The new platform is through Art Storefronts, which has some wonderful features. The site is thecreeksidestudio.com. And uh, on that, I, you can um, look at original works. You can order prints from my work. And there is merchandise like mugs. Coffee mugs. Coffee mugs. I just gave Kyle a coffee mug. Mm -hmm. She loves that. And um, I also have some things that are called graphic inspiration. And those are based on, I have photography, and then I'll have an inspirational saying on that. And you can get that in a, in a print, on a mug, on a t-shirt, on a pillow top. Um, and uh, those were actually... It's kind of funny, I, those came from, uh, I used to be part of an entrepreneurial group out of Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And um, several of the women in that group, it was almost all women, um, were promoters and of, of their products. And they wanted, well, we all had these mantras that we used from time to time that would help us move forward. And so I started typing them up and putting, tacking them up around my office. And I found out that other people were doing that too. And I thought, you know, I kind of like that used to look nicer. And so um, I put some against photography, and then um, my friends in that group said they wanted some too. So I thought, oh, we have a chance. So they were in a, a need and had a solution. So that's on the site too. Anyway, all those things are available, and you can have your things mounted. You can just get the prints for the originals, um, or you can have them not in frame, and that prints will become mounted too. You had mentioned earlier a book that you had written. Yeah, that was the 30 of 30. Yeah, do you, is that also available on that no, website? No, it's actually not produced yet. I have to talk to you about that. Okay. But um, it's, um, it's about that process of doing 30 paintings in 30 days. And what was interesting, and I, I alluded to this a little bit, is that I found that the process I use, setting yourself up for success, anticipating problems, uh, finding solutions ahead of time, having a, a, a review process at the end, that sequence mm -hmm. is useful in almost any endeavor, almost That's any challenge that you take yeah. on, any yeah. project that you take on, that sequence. Um, and so I, in the book, I, I work on exploring that, um, describing it, looking at the process that I use to improve it each time. What were some of the things in there that you did put in there that, you know, people should take a look at and think about when they're going through trying to get a project done or doing a 30-30. You know, I think that mess in the middle, I think that challenge, that, that stuck place, it's so easy to stop when you get to that place. It's so easy to say, oh, this is too hard. I'm not going to do this. Or like with a painting, um, artists are always struggling to not overwork a piece of art because if you overwork it, it's dead. It dies. Um, and that's always a danger. With acrylics, gratefully, you can paint that and start over. If you're using watercolor, you can't do that so well. But anyway, but it happens with anything. Um, I, my late husband was a, a pastor, a Methodist pastor, and we went through several um, building projects, fundraising campaigns, capital campaigns, things like that. And in those, the same thing happens. You start, everybody's excited, we're, we're so, the, you know, the goal is so exciting, the, Light at the end of the tunnel is just wonderful, and then kind of in the middle, it becomes a bit of a slog, becomes a challenge. Yeah, well, yeah, I'd like to get back to um, you helping other authors. Hmm. Okay, yep. there's a question here um, How long have you been doing illustration and graphic design? Let's get the audience to know you. Okay, how long has it been? Um, I started uh, as a graphic designer in the late 70s, 1970s. Mm -hmm. And so I've been doing that since then. I've done illustrations pretty much the whole time, um, off and on. I've done the fine art for about the last seven or eight years. And um, 
as I said, I have clients all over the country. I work in, um, I started out in Missouri, um, in the uh, Kansas City area generally, and then moved to Chicago, worked in some, several companies there, um, then moved to California, uh, worked in Fresno and then Sacramento, and then eventually came back to Missouri. And uh, it's interesting, I would, like I am, I find people who are in the same industry and then they'll introduce me to other people and that's how I ended up with Washington DC connection, that's how I ended up with a Canadian connection, that's how I ended up with a New Zealand connection in the whole industry. Um, so no matter where you are, this one of the lovely things, I can live in the, in the backwoods of Missouri and still work anywhere. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what is your background in publishing? Um, well, most of the time I have been on the back end. I'll lay out the books, I'll do the illustrations, I'll, I'll set up the graphic design, the photography for cover art and that sort of thing. Um, we did some of those, uh, like finding the ISBN numbers, getting the barcode, right. getting, you know, all those technical things. Yeah. And then um, work with the templates from the, the printer, the actual publisher, and just set it up to match that. And um, I'm, It's, you know, graphic design is graphic design. Um, books are not all that different. Um, that's how, but, and so I worked with them in um, California, Texas, Canada, New Zealand, and Canada. I just say Canada. Sorry. <laughs> how do you work with your uh, authors on maybe getting inspiration? I mean, Sometimes authors can help you, and sometimes it can be a real struggle oh. trying to get information from them. I have to say, I've been very lucky. I've very, had very few people who are difficult to work with. Um, not that nobody is difficult to work with. Um, some of the books that I've, I've done um, were through a speaker serial, and many times speakers will, will write a book on their subject matter that they do the talks on. And I would do the covers and so forth. They would often have an idea, um, like the subject matter, often would have a visual reference for whatever it was. Um, and so I would come up with some ideas and I work back and forth, um, sometimes in person, most often it would be via phone calls, emails, Zoom calls, that sort of thing. And so we work back and forth. Um, I have a about a 10 step process of working with the author if, if there are illustrations involved, because that's a whole new thing. Photography um, is a little more cut and dried. You can look at lots of photography and say, mm -hmm. here's yeah. the one I like, here's the one I don't like. With an right. illustration, it's more, um, it's a little harder. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something I have to create. And um, so I'll talk to the author. They'll have ideas. I'll have ideas. Um, I usually do a few samples. Um, of the, or they'll look at my work. I have lots of work online. I have a portfolio of, of uh, illustrations that I can share. People will look at that if they like my style, if they like uh, that sort of thing, then um, then we'll move forward and then I'll do some samples for them. They'll, we'll talk about the cover, we'll talk about inside. They'll tell me about their content. It may be a story and there are particular points in the story that need clarification or they need illustration to bring them to life. And so we'll go back and forth about that and brainstorm what some of those things might be. And then I'll do some little illustrations, little thumbnails we call them because they're, they're small, of um, however many are needed and so we come up with the concept there and then I'll flesh that out a little further and then I get approval for the preliminary drawing. I'll do a color study if there's color involved and then we'll execute the final pieces. Um, typically chronologically as they occur in the story but not always. And I'll use a, a particular medium that is appropriate for whatever. I'm, I'm confused. Now, uh, you do graphics for art, uh, authors. Mm -hmm. All right, and these are additional things you do for authors. Am I wrong? Additional components to their books or whatever. The graphic design, um, it depends. It's uh, illustration okay. and graphic design are not the same, and I think that maybe uh, for a lot of people that might be confusing. Graphic design is the actual act of laying the book out so that it can be printed. Okay. You set the okay. type. You set up the pages. You uh, figure out how the pagination is going to work. You figure out how many pages it needs to be. You have to multiply a book in in, in sets of four because that's how the paper mm -hmm. is bound. Um, you can't just add one page. 
um, to a thing that's called a signature. It's, it's set up for, it's called a signature. And uh, different printers will have different uh, qualifications for that. And then whether it's a uh, saddle stitched or a perfect bound, you need to figure out what the binding is going to be, how many copies you need, how many, um, there are some standard sizes for books. So you set all those things out. Again, you add like the barcodes and the ICM numbers and all that technical stuff. The illustration is um, the elimination of the text. And that's different. Um, I, I usually do those um, either as a, a drawing, an illustration, a, a watercolor, uh, could be an acrylic. Could I use whatever medium is appropriate for um, that subject matter. And then I'll uh, make a scan of that. And then that makes it digital. Then we can like, put it in the layout, which is the graphic design part. You're listening to The Author's Edge with Guy L. Freer and Bob Price. Coming to you weekly on Mondays at 3 p.m. on KWRH 92.9 FM and KXOK 102.9 FM and AM. And Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. nationwide on my genre radio network. Hundred cities. A hundred cities. A hundred cities. Twenty-five million potential listeners. Well, it's also easy to uh, find usradionetwork.com, and there you can access all of our shows. But you can also find our shows on our website, authors-edge.com. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you enjoy most about working with authors? And authors are, for the most part, really interesting people. Um, and. I think it's really fun to collaborate with people in different um, creative endeavors and we kind of bring together the skills that we each have and um, so far people have been very very happy with my work and so it's always exciting to do something and somebody will say oh my gosh I hadn't imagined it quite that way and so I'll take their vision and match it with whatever it comes to my mind and uh, when I share that with them, then we can illuminate the story and make it stronger with either a powerful cover or a wonderful inside illustration or uh, in, in some way uh, make the story stronger. So I really enjoy that part of enhancing what another creative person has done. Can you uh, give us a... Um the steps that you follow working with an author, I think that maybe knowing those or helping authors understand the steps um, would help them. Mm -hmm. well, I was going to say, plus we probably will wind up right on top of the break, so okay. whatever we don't do on this side, we'll do, we'll do on the second half. Yeah. We'll just bring it like that. Okay. So we're not being impolite or anything. <laughs> never, never yeah. Um, most of the uh, work that I get comes from a referral, so typically there'll be an introduction. And I'm a member of several organizations, arts organizations, people sometimes find me there. And um, so the author will have looked at some of my work and they'll decide that my work is appropriate for their subject matter. And so we'll talk about the story, we'll talk about the content. If it's Sometimes I've done some business books and things like that. Sometimes there'll be charts and graphs that need to be involved in. So um, we'll talk about what the, the style is appropriate. And we'll, we'll start there and come up with a style that we both feel good about. And then I'll do some sample pieces and they'll see how they feel about that. And so it's a very collaborative. We'll work back and forth to make sure that at each step of the, of the process, um, the author feels good about what I'm doing and I'll feel confident that I'm supplying exactly what they need. So, hey Arnold, I think we're getting close to break, aren't we? So you know what? I think we're going to go to break. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're close to break and we're on the break. We're going to we'll go to break. So we'll have a few announcements. We come back. We'll continue talking with Roseanne at the Creekside Studio of Art and Design. Got the the. Okay. Yeah. All right. So stay tuned. A few commercials won't be painful, and then we'll be right back.
If you go to their website and, and you just put a quick code studio, you end up in an architectural firm in Colorado. Okay. So that's why it's important. Does anyone let me come? Okay. Well, and you know what? You're going to ask her how people get a hold of you to do business. You can have plug your commercial. Okay. That's right, cool. You did a good job of coming down on that first trip. You did a good job. As a radio industry veteran, yeah, I have to start rambling. Oh, yeah. I start talking, it's really hard to get me to stop. No, 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 you don't. Yeah, well, you're going to keep going with these questions, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I have them right here. Okay, do you want me to bring it back and then when it's you're doing it? I want to finish what she started. No, I mean, but we got to bring the show back first. Right. Oh, right. Um, you want me to do that? Uh, well, yeah, you, you, you can do that. Just so you get used to it, then because next week you're gonna, or week after you're gonna do it on your own, and I'll be remote, listening to you and everything. Well, as long as you keep me on track of time. Even in my classroom, I was terrible about time. Time. Oh, I, even in my classroom, I would get rolling on something, and I and then suddenly the bell would ring, and there I am standing, and I was like, Woo! yeah. I I never got my attendance done correctly. Uh, no, I never got my attendance done on time. It is always done correctly, but it was always late because I could never. Because I bell rings, I don't want to get in there and get my, you know, because I'm excited. Well, yeah, time was never. I just get on the roll and my mouth just keeps coming and the rest of me tries to catch up. Mm -hmm. I went to my clock and then I went to my counter on my clock. So I stopwatch. Stopwatch. So she was the stopwatch, world clock, timer. So I can either do a timer, count down, or I can do the stopwatch. Like when he comes back, I'll start it up again. See, I just started. I just keep going. Yeah, the red, the red, green. I don't know how long it's one of those things lasts. What's that? The green and the yellow and the red there. Three, two, and one. Three, two, one. Green is three. Hey Arnold is no green is three. Yeah. Yellow two. two. Yeah. Which is three? One. Which is two? Which is one? Yeah. Yeah. Three, three, two, one. Yeah. Three, three minutes, two minutes, one minute. Okay. Can I keep talking? Or is it okay to stop? I took that a little short. No, we're gonna we're gonna bring it back. Yeah, bring it back. No, I know, but I mean, no, you keep talking. Okay. Oh no, you, we're not done with you yet. Oh yeah, we have to. We do have to make sure we tell oh, you. Okay, you do that. Okay, we'll I'll talk about that one. Yeah. Do you want to finish this first? And yeah, we're gonna finish this first, and then um uh, uh so yeah. we can say those of you on the radio won't you won't see this, but make the slides and styles and make it feel on Facebook. And we're gonna get through every question, which is fine. Which is fine. Yeah. Um. Yeah, okay. okay, so you're going to finish up what you were saying, and then uh, oh, right, exactly. And but I want to, uh, and then talk about you know, the paintings. I want to get the paintings. Okay. Well, one minute. One minute? Okay. Uh, why don't I bring it back and then we'll flip it to you. Okay. And I'd like to hear you ask if you want questions. Well, I've got another question. One of the questions I like is just explaining to authors how they find an illustrator. What, yeah. are, what are good tips? That's a really good question. When do you want to do that? After this one? Or? After you do the entry. After, yeah. When you can finish. We'll right, and then we can talk about the paintings. Then one more question, then we can talk about the paintings. Okay. okay. So we're going to finish this. We're going to take a couple questions from you. Yeah. The illustrator thing I was really interested in. Okay. Okay. And then. 15 seconds. Okay. I'll, I'll welcome it back and I'll flip it to you. Okay. You, re you ready for that? Okay. Yep. Let me know on.
And welcome back. You're listening to the Author's Edge radio show coming to you every week on KSOK 102.9 FM and KWRHLP 92.9 FM. And it's also on, uh, it's come to you on Fridays at 3, sorry, Mondays at 3 p.m. And then on Nationwide, it's on the My Genre, G-E-N-R-E radio network. Uh, it comes to you Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Same show that you're hearing today. We replay the following week. If you want to see the YouTube of this show, go to KSOK.com and you will see this show. You'll be see the visual of this show, which is kind of cool. Okay, that's a new thing for us that we haven't done before. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to one of our co-hosts, uh, Dale. Oh, thank you. Um... You were in the middle of talking about your 10 steps uh, as to um, working with an author. Right. Okay. Do you want to finish that up? Sure. Um, we had talked about um, how people find an illustrator, and actually we'll get into that a little bit more later. But um, once somebody has found me, they've decided that I can work with them. We look at styles and uh, how the approach is going to um, fit nicely with the content of the book. Um, and then we'll look at the content and the author will often have a handful of places in the book which need clarification or they need additional information or there is a visual that um the, the context calls up like children's books like children's books in particular um also in um, some other books that i've done that the i've done some things for um like nature and environmental groups and there'll be some some information that they need or about. I did a series of uh, endangered um, raptors, um, some um, hawks and birds and things like that. And then I did some, um, some things in California in particular um, with, uh, again, owls, foxes, endangered species. And so you want to have those identified in the, in the, in the work. So um, we add those to the thing. And um, so it's a very collaborative process. We take Step by step, we'll take a look. I'll do a sketch. You say, yeah, that's what I need. Often, there is something in particular that needs to be shown, some aspect of the subject matter that's important. I just want to make sure that I get that in there, which is not always, it's not as obvious. Um, so we go through that, and then I'll do some very small sketches. They're usually, um, you know, two or three inches. It's just a sketch, though, to show how I'm going to compose it. And that's one thing, um, the graphic design that I do, have done for so many years um, informed that composition and the fine art informs that composition so that it's strong and so i'll do uh, sketches that way and then once those sketches are approved then i do the final drawing i think a lot of times authors are worried that um they're going to hire somebody they'll tell them what to do and then they don't see it again until the final product comes out and that's kind of scary because it's not an inexpensive proposition and you want to make sure that what you get answers the need that you have and so I want to make sure that there are no surprises. So that's my philosophy. I think most illustrators work that way. And so um, when I do the final product, you're going to know what you're going to get ahead of time. And so far, I've been very lucky, very fortunate that um, authors are, are pretty happy with what I do. So that's good. What kind of uh, tips do you have for authors, you know, to find illustrators or what? tips do you think would help an author? Okay. Um, well, every illustrator has a style. They'll have a, a methodology. And you want to find somebody who matches, their style matches your content. Whether it's a story, if you have, uh, maybe it's, like I said, a business book, or if you have like my environmental books, um, you want the style to match the content of the book. You want to be friendly. You want them to mutually enhance each other. So um, there are lots of organizations that um, illustrators belong to. There are some national ones um, in St. Louis where we are recording this. Um, there are some art guilds, art associations, organizations, Art St. Louis. Um, Best of Missouri Hands is an organization that I belong to, um, which represents all of the arts, drama, um, visual arts and dance and so you can look at the portfolio of those different artists and see the work that they're doing and make sure that it fits what you're, you need and then 
every printer I know has their favorite graphic designer or, or artist to work with, and um, lots of other, um, anybody who's in the production industry is going to have people that they know. And artists know other artists, and other art authors who have been published will have people that they know. And so I think that's often a good way to go because you'll know that the person that you're being referred to is somebody they felt good about working with. Does that answer your question? That does. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You, you know, there's another question on here. What is the one thing an author should not, like I found was an interesting question, do when working with an illustrator? What should an author not do? Um, I think it's really important not to come into the project with a very rigid point of view. Mm -hmm. You don't want to micromanage a creative person because you'll miss, I think you'll miss an opportunity. Um, so many times, and I've seen this happen over and over again, um, a person who has written something will have a very clear picture of what they want. And you come to the uh, artist and you share that. And that's fine. I think that's a good thing to know what you want. However, you need to be open to the possibilities of what that creative person can bring to the project. Very often, what the author is saying is so very clear to them. They have such a crystal clear picture of it that they don't realize that everybody else doesn't see it the same way. They hear the words, they don't necessarily see the same, the same, the same the image is the same. And so um, the illustrator can help inform that and add some clarity, enhance the vision, enhance the content of the book that way. And I think that's really important to leave that door open to serendipity, to opportunities for different ways of looking at the content. And I usually, or often, will have more than one option in the samples that I share with the author about, like, we could do it this way, or we could do it this way. Um, I had, you know, you'll look at different op options of how to render something, or how to show something, how to compose the, the pages and so forth, depending on what your goal is for that work. All right. Mm -hmm. Robert, you said you wanted to ask something? Go ahead. No, I, I, I mean, think that really what part of we need to understand is that you're a fine artist. Mm -hmm. And in addition to doing illustrations for books. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about how that work influences each other. or And maybe the audience can't see it, radio audience can't see it, but we'll have it on video. We'll have it on Facebook. Right, mm -hmm. right. Kidsok.com, right, Mark? So you, if you go to YouTube after today, if you go to YouTube after today, and you, we usually do Facebook, but we have this exciting, I love uh, YouTube, I enjoy it, that's great. <laughs> so you do on YouTube, so whatever, when you, you got some paintings you're going to show. Oh, yeah. yeah, so when you're going to do it now, I mean, you might as well do it, you only got about 15 minutes to show okay. over, and um, I, I want to make sure we get that plug in for thank you. you. Thank you. Um, I am. Um, I have, I, I will say that I have three galleries that represent me. One of them is here in St. Louis, Company Art Gallery at 6509 Delmar Boulevard in University City. And um, in my hometown, Poplar Bluff, our boyfriend friend represents me. And in Austin, Texas, the Ma Gallery represents my work. So I have three galleries. And uh, in talking about my work, I, I know that the radio audience can't see it, but I think if I describe the style, the yeah. context, That'll help you see a little bit about. Oh, well, they go to your website, we and they can yeah. go to my website. Yeah. Um, and that website again is thecreeksidestudio.com. And okay. um, well, here let's just we'll just get started. You may as well because we'll run out of time. And pick your favorites. I, would, I, yeah. I mean, I okay. I love I'm them excited. all. I'm looking right at them. Okay. I'm going to actually start with a print. Okay, and by the way, the camera that's taking pictures is right there to your left. Okay. This uh, this piece is a, a print, and these are available on my website. Um, this piece was something that I was kind of excited to do. My brother actually is a, quite a good photographer, and he had done a, a picture of Sumac, and he said, Yes, I think you might enjoy doing a painting from this. So I did. And, I was really excited about the, it's sort of an Asian look to it, and mm -hmm. that's kind of different for me. Um, that's okay. Our, uh, our boss is helping us out. Anyway, it, the interesting thing about this particular piece is that it's become kind of a signature piece for me, and I, I didn't anticipate that. 
but I've got it on mugs and I have it on lots of my florist materials. Um, it just shows really well, and it, uh, there's kind of a universality to it. Um, but that's one of the prints that's available, and the the warm and cool colors is one of the things that particularly appeals to me about that piece. Um, so that's one. Uh, yes. Okay, the next one I'm showing is, um, I call this one the Three Sisters. Um, there's a low water bridge on the farm where I lived for several years, and uh, many years of my, my parents lived there before me. Um, it's been in the family for mm, 60 or 70 years. And the, the creek is, is a Ten Mile Creek, and it's representative to me of the lifeblood of the area. And it's a very lush green uh, painting. That's coming up on Camp Swift Bay right okay, now. Okay, there we go. Yeah. There it is. Okay. See, if um, you wave, it'll see you. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, it's very lush and green. I always felt like the three, the, the three trees that are there were sort of, um, they were keeping watch. They were guardians of that, that very special place for me. My children played there, I played there, we fished there. It was, um, like I say, it was, it's kind of an anchor for that, that area. And the, the creek was, was um, therapeutic. When That's you go there, you hear the, the babbling sounds of the brook, the beautiful reflections uh, in the water. And so that's the kind of, of painting that I really enjoy doing. We've got another one. Mark did a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job. Of, thank you so much. <laughs> He's holding those up to the cameras. So. Okay, here's one more that is a little different. It's got a, a person in it. I didn't know that I could do people. I, I have to be honest with you. Um, landscapes are more forgiving. When you do a person, it needs to look like the person. <laughs> so <laughs> you have a lot less leeway. Um, this actually happens to be my granddaughter. And I worked from some photographer oh. with a phenomenal photographer, Jennifer Krieger, who is in Papua Bluff. But um, that's, watching us watching you. that's in that same place <laughs> on the creek uh, at the low water bridge and uh, Charlotte is there. Um, just again, it's, it's that peacefulness. It's that, that wonderful uh, glow of the reflection of the light in the water. And it's, I just I find it very therapeutic, very calming. It's, uh, Wait, it's that's so, so tranquil. That's the, that's, it's so tranquil. Yeah, all of your paintings have that same quality of being calm. Mm -hmm. Tranquil, tranquil, full of light, yeah. Um, and and yeah, it, that's uh, something that I just, I just love. Thank you, thank you. I, I had a friend say that my paintings were a peaceful retreat. Yes, they are. And Absolutely. Thought, well, if I can do that, that's a good thing. Absolutely. So, so we're, we are on uh, YouTube as well. Yeah, we are. Okay, it's okay dot com. There we go. On YouTube, and I'm looking at us right now live. Oh, great, great. Isn't that exciting? It is exciting. I know. Yay. Yay. You'll be able to find it on the uh, Author's Edge right. website yeah. also. I just decided to pull it up, but here it is. <laughs> Under archives, so yeah. we'll, we'll have those videos. Yeah, wonder if modern technology. Yeah, we got about, in this show, I think probably 14 minutes or less to go. Okay. How much time do you got, boss? Is anybody here? Oh, let's just go for it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Because we have well, another show that's coming on after you. Okay. So we, we but can you share a little bit about how a writer can help their illustrator? Yeah. Oh. Um, how can a writer help an illustrator? I can't draw. <laughs> no. And, and that, well, actually, I, I think everybody has a creative part of them that comes out in some fashion. Um, for some people, it might be writing. For some people, it might be cooking. Or it might be landscape. Um, I have seen some very creative accountants. So you just never know where that creativity is going to show itself. But to allow the illustrator to use some creativity. Uh, by the same token, I think it's really important to um, try to keep, keep communication open. Make sure that you share, like if you have a, a nudge or a feeling that something's not quite right, be sure to express that to your um, illustrator and let them know because in all likelihood that can be addressed, it can be uh, shifted or changed or adapted in some way so that um, it, it meets your goal because that's the whole point of having an illustrator. It, the goal is to clarify, to amplify, to enhance your story or the, the book. Um, 
the content. So just keep the communication open, uh, go with the flow, try to allow some serendipity. Okay, why don't we, um, we have 10 minutes to go, why don't we... Uh, hey, why don't we find out what you're working on now? Yeah, that'd be a good one. What way. are you working on now? Yeah. <laughs> a couple of things. I'm working on Sprout. With uh, Sprout, Ralph oh, yes. and uh, I know him. You do. He's such a nice guy, isn't he? Yeah. I think I'll see him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have to say, when I came to the book and I was working as a fine artist, I was so excited that somebody else was going to help me. And I thought, this is cool. No artist would have tried. And uh, when I saw Ralph's work, um, his art is just so exciting to me. It's so different than anything I created because it's very hard line, it's art deco. It's it's modern, it's expressive, it's playful. It's very playful. He is very playful. And the added dimension of um, he's got these giant pull toys that are, you know, they're three or four feet tall and they have a little pull thing on them and they, and they have where you can drag them around, you know, on wheels. I just find that marvel. Um, anyway, so I'm working with Ralph on that, on his um, book, Sprout, which is really fun. Um, and there are, there, it's, um, it's a little more content heavy. It doesn't have as many pictures and friends for this book. So we'll work on that one. And then I have uh, on a more personal level at my studio, I'm working on uh, a painting for a dear friend uh, of a, um, a cabin that he built with his father in the woods in uh, central Missouri. And um, that one is really exciting to me. I'm really pleased to be able to, to do that one. And then I have. Um, a, a new series that I'm starting, or actually it's more of a continuation of a series that I started last year, which is called um, Peace Like a River. And um, I'm, my husband and I both really enjoy the rivers in South, Southern Missouri, and we spend a lot of time on them. Um, we get camping or fishing or swimming or you know, all the things we do on the river. And um, it's so, those images are so soothing. You can see my little, little things I've shown so far that, that I'm drawn to that. So the Peace Like a River series is continuing. And um, I have, um, as an artist, when you work with a gallery, you'll have a body of work that you take to them, and they'll show that body of work. And over time, some of the work will sell, some of the work won't. And uh, it's in, um, the, the, the artist then will go back from time to time, usually every six months or 12 months, and you'll, any work that hasn't sold, you can rotate in some of the newer work that you're doing. And then take some of the other work and either move it to another gallery or, or to uh, take it back to your studio or whatever. And it's really interesting when you move work from one gallery to another. Sometimes that's all it takes, and then the work sells. It's like it's a fresh thing in this new place. But yeah. um, the work that I'm doing now is um, my color palette has changed. I've, I've taken a few classes from some artists that I admire, and um, I think it has. I'm, I'm being more bold as I. I'm, being more confident in the work that I do. And I was just telling I on the way to this um, session that I have some ideas about something I really want to try. I'd like to work large. Some of my canvases, the biggest one I've done so far was four feet by 12 feet. So that's quite large and it's in three panels. And that work of the, using your gross motor skills, your whole arm, your whole body, and doing the work is really gratifying. And I want to use uh, that large scale really large brushes and just get more involved in it and let go of being so representational. Not that I don't want you to be able to see what you're looking at, to recognize what you're seeing, because I do want it to look like a landscape, because most of the time that's what I'm working on. I really enjoy that option of taking it, um, like if you want it to look perfectly representational, I'll take a photograph. If you want it to be a painting, it needs to be a painting. It needs to, you need to bring something more to the subject matter. So um, I'm kind of excited about that. Use bigger brushes, bigger emotions, older colors, um, I'm I'm texture, things like that. I think it's gonna be fun. I have to be very brave and kind of launch, and if it doesn't go well, I have to be okay with that. Well, so, like I said, jump in and figure out how to swim after. Yeah, <laughs> in the last five minutes of the show for today, mm -hmm. what would you like the audience to know about your business? What do you want them to come away with from today? Oh, I think it's really exciting that you have this platform, this forum for authors and illustrators to get together, to get to know each other, to find out how to work together, how to uh, be mutually beneficial in their relationship. Um, 
And as far as my business is concerned, I am, like I said, I have a new uh, web platform that I think is exciting to me because of the new opportunities that are there. Um, and um, I'm happy for people to see that. The galleries that I work with have been really good to me, and, and I appreciate those relationships. Um, the company of, company of galleries here, company.com, the mall gallery, uh, the mall gallery, the mallgallery.com in Austin, Texas, and artboyframe.com in Papa Bluff. Um, they have all been so good to work with, um, and um, I, I'm just so grateful for that. Um, so thank you. What artists inspire you? You know, coming up, I really love the Hudson River artists who worked in the Hudson River Valley in New York, and that was a uh, hundred years ago. Um, and their work is just rich and bold and actually it even goes back further than that into the late 1700s early 1800s they went out into the uh, western u.s when there were no they it was hard to get a camera out there and they did these magnificent paintings of like yellowstone and the rockies and just art that takes your breath away and that's kind of it's like oh my gosh if i could do anything i even approach that that would be great but the Impressionists, too, the, um, the French Impressionists, who were so bold with their color and so free and loose with their brushstrokes, and um, just so exciting and so beautiful. Um, yeah. I wanted to bring, kind of marry those two things together, the landscapes and then the, the, the bold colors. Okay. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up today. Um, thank you, uh, Roseanne, for being on the show. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you. Be sure to tune back uh, in every week when Kyle and Bob will bring you the author judge. I was pleased to be part of it today. And uh, we look forward to you coming back again on the air. Other people. So thank you, audience. Guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. Well, we're pleased to have you. Here. We're yeah. pleased. Oh, we are super pleased yeah. to have you here. <laughs> and we are super pleased to do this show. What a great well, day. I think we're off to a great start. Thank, Thank you, so. everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. That's it. Yeah. We did it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>